How are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? That's my wife sitting in the corner. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> nice to meet Nice to virtually meet you, I guess. <laughs> yes. This is the world we live in. I haven't seen another human being in man, almost half a year or so. I like your poster in the back. What is what is that? The framed photo is it's really cool. This is a, a friend of mine um, made this. He does a few of these. That's Tom York and lyrics um, over it. And uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I love, I, I'm a big Radiohead fan. You know, very different from most people. I love Radiohead. But uh, yeah, he's, a, <laughs> he's an inspiration to me as a writer. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there he is looking at us. <laughs> my girlfriend just popped in to tell us that she was, that tell me that she was on the way to the gym. And she was like, who are you talking to? Oh my God, it's Jim. <laughs> no. Jamie, troubles here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I gotta ask you. Okay, so I love this show. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I asked Kelly Riley the same question, and she gave me a really cool answer. I gotta ask you, why does Beth hate Jamie so much? <laughs> I don't know. What you tell me. I've seen up this episode four. So. Okay. Yeah. There. There. The. The real answer is coming. We're only a couple episodes away, actually. <laughs> I'll tell you this. It is not what, what I don't think anyone, no one has, no one has brought this theory to me, you know, what okay. it really is. So it, it, I think it's going to be a surprise. I don't want to say anything because I'm, I'm the worst. I'll give away something and I don't want to do that. It's, it's got built up such tension that I don't want to relieve it too early. He <laughs> asked me what I thought it was, but... Honestly, I don't even know if I could vocalize it at this point because yeah. it's just like, no, oh, it's built up. Disturbing. Is it yeah. it's too disturbing to, to vocalize? Yeah. I, I didn't want to say it because it was like, if I'm wrong, then it'll be like, well, you're really sick. But then if I'm right, it'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, everyone that I've, I came up before I knew the real answer with, they were all, they were all pretty sick and dark too. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Tricky. So. I have to ask you a question because Jamie obviously last season was it was a pretty eventful season for him <laughs> and uh, he, it's hard to even put this word in but do you think that there's ever a chance that Jamie could have a shot at redemption which seems like it'd be tough considering he's I mean he's a murderer but do you think that there is somewhere in his mind the thought that maybe one day he could be redeemed for the things that he's done yes in his mind absolutely <laughs> Jamie is a, I think he's a survivor. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't look like it because he's, you know, he, he, on, on the surface in the cowboy world, he seems weaker. Mm -hmm. But the truth is he, I think he's, he's got a resilience that is, could stand up to any of, uh, any other characters in the show. And he's got a self-preservation button that he knows how to push. He's also always got a plan. <laughs> so Jamie, no matter what happens to him or whatever he does, he's always got a plan. I think he, right now what we've been seeing in the first part of the season is jamie working out his his plan um now events happen that sort of sort of get him out of it anyway and that's going to be that's going to be interesting that's how we're going to find kind of find out the secrets later down the line i mean i thought he fared pretty well in the cowboy world though when he was when he was staying in the bunkhouse like he seemed like he was doing okay they weren't like bullying him or really pushing him around or anything like he didn't really let himself be pushed around so i, I guess he kind of you know, I, I I do find that like even though he's a bit of a weasel to some extent, I do kind of respect him in a certain way. I think part of that is your performance, though, as well. Like, there is something about him that you know he's not. You know, you, you kind of get why people trust him with things, though, because he seems like he knows what he's doing. To yeah, you. That's a good point. I like the way you wear that. A lot of times we do that with people. Like you, you, you put your trust in people that you also kind of mistreat because in one aspect in one in one breath you've seen them as weak and strong at the same time because because they can hold your secret because in some ways people think see that as subservient and that they're weaker in some way because they will hold your water but that's not necessarily true that just means they have more ammunition against you when the when the stuff falls apart and that's why i think jamie's always taking um jamie's always uh, marking off the score and he's always keeping you know, what did Giuliani say when he's waving his phone around? I got all this stuff right here. Like that to me was a, not to, not to liken Jamie to Rudy Giuliani, sadly, but you know, there's a, that Weasley aspect is in him, his survivalist mode. Right. And I think that <laughs> there's that kind of redemption, but they're all, I mean, he's in a world of murderers. He's living yeah. in a ranch of murderers. So I think he can, his was, I think it broke him. He's yeah. broken now more so than he ever was before. 
And the sadness that I found in those moments were so profound and so unlaced with anger. He had not the anger in him or any kind of that sort of tendency to, to lean on anger when you're feeling sad, especially as men tend to do, especially in that world. Sure. That wasn't there. It was just sad. I think he mourned in a deep way. Uh, and that came out a lot in last season in the performance or when I was performing it, I would find that a lot. I don't know what's on the, uh, what comes across, but you know, it's always there, his profound sadness. So I think he's now broken and, and that's going to inform his decisions too. And the way he's going to uh, respond to his family. Well, it does seem that whenever things start to go his way, there's going to be a disaster. Like his first day on the job at the, at the as, as the, as the agent, you know, his, the, that, that, that idiot who works for him kills those guys. <laughs> it's the kind of, I didn't, I was kind of shocked when he opened up the car and they're literally in pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a big laugh out of that, I have to say, the <laughs> twisted way. All right, so let me ask you, so one of the things that's kind of cool though is you're talking about him being around a bunch of murders and stuff like that. Do you think that Jamie's character, that the character also has something of a chip on his shoulder? being surrounded by such like these alpha male kind of characters that really like chest out and on the outward tough like rip and and and, and, and his father obviously yeah. uh, while Jamie is kind of much more quieter he doesn't really show he's not a shower in that way do you think yeah. he has that chip yeah yeah I mean it's a it's he belongs more in a setting in a in a business setting where you where you, where you have that machismo like he you stick him in that world it's kind of like beth in a way where she mm -hmm. when she gets in that business world she just gets really nasty and tough yeah. with people to get what she wants i think jamie's his his power would would be more useful in that setting but i think he's aware because he grew up in this setting with cowboys and whatnot that his set of strengths and tools are never going to be appreciated by the people around him in a way no. that they're not see as tough to be so smart that you can work your way around the law, the, the, the law to get someone out of trouble. Like they, they want to punch their way out, <laughs> think his way out. They think that's a useless uh, attribute, although they keep him around. So, of you course. Know, protective. so <laughs> you know, he know he's aware of who he is. Like he knows yeah. that he's this thin veil of protection between them and the real law and all this, facade of a performance that they do is all only can happen with him that's his viewpoint right and that's tough so he has to be self-sufficient in that idea of himself but he's never going to get um, um accepted by the people around him because he's the opposite of what they think is truly a tough guy or truly a a, 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 a person with a um like a drive to, to yeah, stay alive. don't back him into a corner yeah, no, don't mess with Jamie. He's the, he's got the he's you know he's got the real tools that can do you in for years, but <laughs> nobody knows that yet. <laughs> I, I also have to ask: one of the things that I really find unique about Yellowstone is that it's probably the only show that I've ever seen that every single episode is written by the showrunner by Taylor Sheridan. And I think that gives it a very different flavor from other shows, whereas you don't necessarily have a writer's room in the traditional sense for you as an actor and somebody who's done stuff like that before is it is it really refreshing is it very different and to get the chance to build this character over such a long amount of time i love it i love it because um uh, uh you know i never worked with that before either but taylor is um he's invested he this is his baby and he every every character is important to him and every character came from a place that um he spawned and i think he can only see it that way yeah and he just can't help it he keeps coming back he, you know i think at times he's thought about having other writers and you know things like that but you know it's so important to him for the voices to be right and the way he sees them that he, he's not giving it up so i you know for for us that's it's a lot like what you'd work with with a play you know or something like that with a playwright they worked through and were the voices for everything from the beginning through every draft that they finally, till they finally got to the finished product and then they present it to you and you go and meet it as the actor. You don't have to fill in holes or, you know, try to reason with anything. You're actually doing the work to discover what the writer is working on. So having the writer there every day and doing that, you're constantly in this relationship of discovery with his creative side. So, um, uh, I think that's amazing. You know, I think it's also good to have diverse um, writers rooms. So, uh, I don't think every show necessarily has to be that to, 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 and it wouldn't always work like this one has, but Taylor's, this is kind of 
what makes him special is at this world yeah his world and he does it all and i think he's like that with everything in his life and so it'd be hard for him to do that any other way i mean the directors that you have too are really high quality though i'm seeing john Dahl's name coming up and you know i mean great director as well who i don't necessarily see do tv that often so there is yes. kind of a classy a classiness i think to the show I, I gotta ask you also are you guys back to filming yet i know that things are kind of or are you planning on getting back soon considering what's going on well, that's above my pay grade to know exactly um, where they're at with everything. But I know that, you know, we all want to. We're all desperate to get back on this, keep the momentum up and, and work. But it's huge. It's getting, it just seems like it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as the show goes on. It's crazy. You know, last year it seemed like it was sort of like, okay, this is, this is going to be big and that's what it was going to be. But it's just getting bigger. And our, like you said, our audience is getting more diverse in a way like we're getting a lot of people a lot of people might not have tuned into a show like this because they're like ah cowboys white guys running around doing cowboy stuff like uh right now but it's it's so much more than that it's so much there's so i think uh, uh, you know a lot of characters for a lot of different audiences and a lot of things to tap into and it's in a microcosm of america land ownership and and who we are in that way like what do we what what is our relationship with the land here and and ownership and, and and what it was before and after. So it's got all these things that we want to keep that up. So of course we all want to work, but bottom line, everyone wants to be safe. No one wants to get sick. So we also have to be cautious. It's funny you say that about how it connects to such a diverse audience because I'm actually in Montreal. So I, the show actually didn't air here for the first couple of seasons. I saw it on, on screeners from the studio and I got addicted to it and, and my girlfriend too got crazy addicted to it as well, who would have never in a million years watched a cowboy show, but now it's her favorite show, it's her favorite. Oh, really, and, that's incredible. And my parents who are in their 70s, I buy them the DVDs and, and they are addicted to it. And they keep asking me, when am I gonna see season three? When am I gonna see season three? Because <laughs> it's not coming out for ages. It but really? It does well, really yeah, my, though, yeah. No, my wife is, uh, my wife here. <laughs> yeah. she's, uh, she's from Canada, she's from, from Regina. Oh, cool. And I, trying so hard to get like DVDs up to my, or my extended family up there and try to get so they could watch it. But I'm glad it's finally airing up there. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that same in England, we have a good audience. I mean, there's not cowboy culture there. Uh, we have good audiences and, and, a lot of, and a lot of cities are starting to tune in now. A lot of people in cities that weren't as much tuning in. So- well, um, Bowser told me he had a busload of tourists from China scream out rip when they saw him. So that was cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, One, I mean, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, what was that? I'm just gonna say that's that that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. <laughs> One last question. Okay, so assuming Jamie one day ends up running everything, okay, who do you think would be the one person he would keep around that could help him out? Who do you think would be the one guy? I feel like he'd keep Rip around, <laughs> but I don't know. That's a good one. Is that that's your feeling is Rip because Rip's a good balance for him. Rip yeah. would Rip would be able to run the land actually. Yeah. Do yeah. I don't know though. What would you? Who would you think? I mean, who do you think he'd keep around? I think. I think right now, what I would say is, I would say probably Luke. Really? He would keep her, uh, Luke. Yeah. Sorry, you know uh, Casey. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I, uh, I think Casey would be because I feel like he and Casey, there's not a whole lot of of bad blood there. Well, Casey seems to like him, yeah. And is also yeah. very handy too, in, in terms of gunfights and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Right, and he and he could run, that to be, could, be, yeah. could be an ideal one. He could run the land. But, the, the, but Rip is another potential one too, because there's obviously a, clo a, a closer relationship than we would have thought of that we see after Jamie murders the reporter and the response to that, you see Rip's, um, sort of comforting him. <laughs> no, things go wrong with Beth though, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the best yeah. caveat there. That's a good question though. Right now I'd say, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, or you never know, I mean, he, you never know with Jamie. There's a bit of subversion in Jamie. Yeah. It could, could be, be Beth around, I don't know. <laughs> could be Thomas Rainwater. You never, you don't know with Jamie. Yeah. But, you know, we don't get to know who Jamie really feels yet. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you very much. Uh, love talking to you and uh, can't here. Wait to more of the show. <laughs> yeah, great talking to you, Chris. Thank you so much. Bye. You are the trailer park. I am the tornado. Every road is right here. Destiny is a hard thing to run from, isn't it? You're all I need. You are truly evil. All I do is you. There's more.
monsters everywhere in this world. 